Whenever you see a picture of Tyrannosaurus rex, it usually has its mouth open, baring its razor-sharp teeth, or dining on some unlucky neighbors. Tyrannosaurus rex, from the Greek meaning tyrant, lizard, and king, was one of the largest and most ferocious of the dinosaurs. This giant meat-eater lived approximately 135 million years ago, reaching 18 feet in height, 45 feet in length, and weighing seven tons. That's bigger than a double-decker bus. It tore the flesh of its prey with a series of dagger-like teeth that were up to six inches long. Even worse for its victims, these teeth had serrated edges, like a steak knife. Tyrannosaurus also had large, powerful back legs with claws on its feet that it used to grip its prey. It also had tiny front limbs, so small that they may have been of little use. Considering its size and strength, it must have been a mighty hunter and a true king of its time. Reverend Dr. Robert Plott found the first dinosaur fossil in 1676. It was the lower part of a large femur, that is, a leg bone. But he didn't know what it was, and the bone has since been lost. Today, we think it might have been the thigh bone of the giant Megalosaurus. Fossils have been continually discovered since then, but it wasn't until the 1800s that people began to make serious, concentrated studies of them. One of the largest finds of fossils is in Los Angeles, California, at the La Brea Tar Pits. In the prehistoric times following the time of dinosaurs, tar covered the area, and a thin layer of water covered the tar. Animals would come to drink the water, walk out into the tar, and get stuck. They died in the tar and now their bones are discovered almost every time a scientist digs there. The Stegosaurus was covered with so much armored plating that it looked like a tank. It probably needed all that protection because the poor beast had a brain about the size of a walnut. Stegosaurus was about 20 feet long and weighed around three tons. The Stegosaurus had a double row of triangular plates running along its neck, back, and tail. It also had sharp spikes on its tail. But it was a plant eater, so despite its ferocious appearance, it wouldn't have been a danger to any other creature. But luckily, Stegosaurus had all that armor to protect itself against the bigger, faster, meat-eating dinosaurs. Stegosaurus lived during the Jurassic era, an age that started about 180 million years ago. Do you know what eras your favorite dinosaurs lived in? Well, fasten your seatbelt and get ready for a trip through time and a lot of tongue-twisting dinosaur names. Click on the bone and find out more. Yay! The Heterodontosaurus, a dinosaur that measured only three and a half feet long, lived during the Triassic period, about 225 million to 180 million years ago. 180 to 160 million years ago, in the Lower Jurassic era, early dinosaurs called Scalidosaurus and Megalosaurus could be found. Between 160 and 136 million years ago, Diplodocus inhabited the Upper Jurassic Age, along with the Plesiosaurus, a swimming dinosaur, and Archaeopteryx, the earliest known bird. By the Lower Cretaceous time, 135 to 100 million years ago, Iguanodons and Hypsilophodons lumbered around. In the Upper Cretaceous Age, 65 to 100 million years ago, Tyrannosaurus rex roamed the Earth, while Pteranodon, one of the largest flying animals that ever lived, soared in the sky. The Quaternary Period, about 2 million years ago, saw the first human beings. If dinosaurs existed millions of years before any human beings, 
Why are we so sure that they existed? Well, everything we know about dinosaurs comes from studying their remains, called fossils. The most common fossils are petrified bits of bones, teeth, and claws, and other hard body parts. Scientists study these remains to figure the dinosaur's size, what it ate, and how it lived. There are also fossils of footprints that hardened over thousands of years. From these prints, scientists can figure out the size of the foot and leg and whether the dinosaur walked on two legs or four. But we usually only find one or two bones in the same place, so it's hard to know exactly what dinosaurs looked like. We have to study the bones we have along with what we know about animal anatomy, and more or less make an educated guess. This early drawing shows just how much our guesses have changed over the years. In the early 1820s, people began to find a lot of fossils that were bigger than any animal they knew of. In 1842, Sir Richard Owen first used the term dinosauria to describe these peculiar creatures. He contacted a sculptor named Waterhouse Hawkins and commissioned him to build models of three dinosaurs and some marine creatures. The models were to be displayed on the grounds of the Great Glass Exposition Building, the Crystal Palace. Just before the models were completed, Owen held a dinner for 21 of Great Britain's leading scientists and scholars. With the hall entirely filled with these gigantic models, the dinner table was specially arranged inside a partially completed iguanodon. These early models looked quite different from the way we now picture dinosaurs, but they're still standing, and you can go see them at the Crystal Palace just outside of London, England. You may feel colder in an icy breeze or take off your shirt on a hot day, but your basic body temperature won't change from the standard 98.6 degrees. That's because humans, like all other mammals, such as cats and dogs, are warm-blooded. Warm-blooded means that our body temperature stays constant, despite changes in the temperature of the air around us. But there's another group of creatures that are cold-blooded. Their temperature goes up or down with changes in air temperature, although their temperature tends to be slightly lower than that of the air. Cold-blooded animals include insects, lizards, tortoises, frogs, and fish. Normal body temperatures can vary quite a lot, depending on the animal. Click on the thermometer to find out more. The opossum is a marsupial with a body temperature of 94.5 degrees. Human beings prefer to keep a comfortable 98.6 degrees. It may be cold where the polar bear lives, but its body temperature is a nice warm 99.7 degrees. Your pet dog's temperature is about 100.8 degrees underneath all that fur. Most pigs run a temperature of about 101.5 degrees. Don't be surprised if your pet duck runs a temperature of 107.8 degrees. 108 degrees is the normal body temperature for pigeons. You know that pesky bug that annoyed you all summer long? Well, it's got a whole bunch of relatives, too. No other class of animal on Earth has as many varieties as insects. In fact, there are between two and four million different kinds of insects. The only way scientists can even begin to count the insect population in one area is to count all the insects that can be found in and on a square yard of rich, moist soil. That can be anywhere from 500 to 2,000 creatures. It is estimated that around 4 million insects live in a single acre of good soil. That's about the size of a football field. Most insects are too small to notice, and some are even microscopic. When you think of the amazing number of insects that exist at any one time, you realize that we really move through a world of insects. We just have no idea that most of them exist. Most insects have six legs, 
a body that's divided into three sections and two pair of wings, although some have different numbers of wings or legs. In fact, some bugs are so different that they're not classified as insects at all. Click on a picture to find out more. The adult female mosquito sucks blood from warm-blooded animals and leaves those itchy bites. Some Did you know that sp the adult female mosquito sucks blood from warm-blooded animals and leaves those itchy bites? Some mosquitoes also carry dangerous diseases, such as malaria. Did you know that spiders have eight eyes? They live all over the world, and although they are poisonous to their prey, only a few are dangerous to human beings. You may think that ticks are insects, but they're actually closely related to spiders. They suck blood from people, animals, and birds, and can carry diseases like spotted tick fever. Beetles live on land and water, on every continent except Antarctica. Their hard front wings aren't used for flying, but to protect the more delicate flying wings behind them. Most ants are wingless, but they're still insects. They live all over the world and are very social. They like to live with lots of other ants. Do centipedes really have 100 legs? Nope, and they're not insects either. They only have one pair of legs per body segment and little or no sight. A young centipede may only have seven pair of legs and an adult between 15 and 170 pair. You can find mites living on plants and animals all over the world, but like ticks, they are not really insects. Adult mites have four pair of legs and a head and abdomen that are fused together. Dragonflies hold their legs together while they fly, forming a sort of basket that traps their prey. 300 million years ago, prehistoric dragonflies had wingspans of 30 inches. Flies have large compound eyes and movable antennae on the head. It might be hard to see the second pair of wings, but they're there. They look like little knobs and they're used for balance. Any type of grasshopper that has short antennae is called a locust. Since biblical times, locusts have been known for moving around in great swarms and destroying acres of plants. Consider the amazing fly, buzzing around without a care, always just a step ahead of the fly swatter, and with the amazing ability to walk on the ceiling. How do they do this? Well, the fly has three pair of legs that are divided into five parts. The last part is the foot. Sticky pads located under the claws on the foot allow the fly to walk upside down in the ceiling or anywhere else it likes with the greatest of ease. But despite this wonderful talent, the common housefly actually spends its entire life within a few hundred feet of the area where it was born. A fly's feet are not the only complex part of its tiny body. Flies have twice the number of eyes that we do. They have two compound eyes made up of thousands of lenses and small simple eyes on top of their heads looking straight up. Their feelers or antennae are not used for touch but for smell. A fly can detect odors at great distances. A housefly's tongue is a long tube like a sponge which soaks up juices. Its body is divided into three parts, head, thorax, and abdomen. The thorax is striped and has three pair of legs attached to it. A fly has two transparent wings with small knobs behind them that help it stay balanced in flight. Flies love to eat decomposing organic wastes, like your garbage. You might think that insects are just too small to have hearts. But they do, although their hearts are very different from ours. An insect's heart is a long tube running along the top of its body, right under the skin. The heart opens up just under the brain where blood flows out and runs freely. On its way through the body, the blood delivers digested food and takes away waste material. In some insects, 
such as the cutworm and mosquito larva, you can see the tube-like heart beating along its back. You might notice that the heart beats faster when the insect is warm than when it's cold. As a matter of fact, it can go from 140 beats per minute in an active insect to one beat per minute in a very slow insect. That's because insects are cold-blooded and it takes activity to warm them up and increase their heartbeat. Not only do insects have hearts, but they also have brains, although they're very primitive compared to the complex human brain. Unlike the human brain, which allows us to think and make decisions, the insect's brain works automatically and its actions are involuntary. That means it doesn't have to think about them to make them happen. An insect's brain is simply a large nerve in the center of its head. It receives sensations and sends messages to make certain muscles work. By the way, considering their size, insects are amazingly strong. That's because they have many thick muscles. In fact, they often have more muscles than we do. We have about 800, while a grasshopper has about 900 muscles. Those muscles, coupled with a tiny, lightweight body, are why a grasshopper can jump so far. You may think that a chameleon disguises itself as craftily as a private eye, changing its color in order to match its surroundings. Not true. It does change its skin color, however, depending on the temperature of the surrounding air, its emotional state, and how light or dark it is outside. Here's how. Just beneath the chameleon's transparent skin are layers of cells that contain yellow, black, and red coloring matter. When these cells expand or contract, the chameleon changes color. Fortunately for the chameleon, its skin colors help it to blend into the surrounding environment. That makes it very difficult for its enemies to see the chameleon. Since the chameleon has few other defenses, the best thing it can do to stay safe is exactly what it does best, hide. What do you think makes a chameleon turn different colors? Click on the colors to see. You can tell an angry chameleon by its dark colors. On a hot but sunless day, you might find a chameleon in green attire. In the hot sun, a chameleon prefers to be very dark, almost black. If it's frightened or excited, it turns paler colors with yellow spots. In the cool of the evening, this little animal has a range of green shades to choose from. In the dark night, when it may be a little safer than during the day, the chameleon sports a cream color with yellow spots. It's hard not to admire the beautiful colors and patterns of many snakes, but pretty or not, some snakes are poisonous. There are over 2,000 kinds of snakes, they live in almost every area of the world, on land, underground, in trees, even in water. One of the deadliest snakes is the king cobra. Found in Asia, the king cobra can kill an elephant in four hours. The tiger snake of Australia has an extremely potent venom that it uses mostly on frogs, rodents, and other snakes. In the United States, there are only four types of poisonous snakes. One is the coral snake a member of the cobra family which lives only in the south. The cottonmouth or water moccasin lives in the southeast and the copperhead lives in the eastern states from Massachusetts down to Florida. But the rattlesnake can be found in nearly every state. There are about a dozen different types of rattlesnakes and they all make an unforgettable rattling sound with their tail. You know that a rattlesnake has to do more than shake its rattle in order to harm you. It has to bite you. Poisonous snakes have special teeth called fangs in their upper jaws. The fangs are hollow and have an opening at the tip. 
they're attached to poison glands in the snake's head. When a snake strikes its victim, it injects a poisonous venom. The venom either kills the prey or makes it unconscious before it's eaten. Did you know that if a snake loses its fangs, it's still dangerous? That's because it will eventually grow those fangs back and use them again. With their darting tongues and lightning-fast movements, some lizards can be frightening. But out of 2,500 different kinds, only two are actually poisonous. They're the Gila monster, which lives in the American deserts, and the beaded lizard of Mexico. The rest are quite harmless. The lizard is a relative of the snake, with cold blood and a scaly skin. Lizards' bodies are divided into three parts, the head, trunk, and tail. Most have four legs, although some have no legs at all and look just like snakes. And here's an odd defense that many lizards have against enemies. They can break off their tails. While an enemy is busy gnawing on the tail, the lizard can flee to safety. Eventually, its tail will grow back again. Lizards come in many different colors. Those who live in colorful grassy or tree areas are brightly colored. Lizards that live in the desert feature the paler colors of that landscape. <laughs>